Hello and Assalamu alaikum. Here in this particular video, we are going to do further concepts related to photoelectric effect. And we are going to try and emphasize on the term work function energy and the threshold frequency. So we already know that in photoelectric effect, the electromagnetic radiation falls onto the metal surface provides energy to the electron and the electrons are being emitted out. According to Einstein's explanation, the electromagnetic radiation delivers energy to electrons in the form of bundles of energy, which are called photons. The electromagnetic radiation requires a minimum frequency called threshold frequency to cause photoelectric emission. That is because a single photon interacts with single electron. If each photon carries enough energy required by the electron to break the lattice, then only electromagnetic radiation would occur. So the minimum amount of energy associated with threshold frequency, which can cause photoelectric emission, that particular amount of energy is called the work function energy. So the work function energy is the energy that is associated with threshold frequency. So if I represent work function energy by phi, so the amount of energy would be equal to H F naught, where F naught is the threshold frequency. So the minimum frequency, and you calculate the amount of energy associated with the minimum frequency, then that amount of energy is called the work function energy. Now, something slightly interesting about work function energy is that if the radiation that we use has a threshold frequency and we provide the work function energy, even then the electrons are not going to emit out. That is because we have provided the energy to the electrons to break the lattice, but still these electrons don't have any kinetic energy to move out. And hence, we need to provide a frequency which is slightly higher than threshold frequency so that the electrons can be seen to be emitted out. If we provide energy that's exactly equal to the threshold frequency, then we might need some sort of accelerating potential to cause the electrons to be emitted out. As if the amount of energy is equal to the work function energy, the electrons would be released from the lattice, but they can't be traveling. To make them travel, Either you provide an accelerating potential and hence electrons can be pulled out of the metal lattice and can be seen traveling. And the other possibility is that you use a frequency that's bigger than threshold frequency. If you use frequency that is higher than threshold frequency, then still electrons can be seen to be coming out. Because if you're using frequency higher than threshold frequency, then you are providing energy higher than work function energy. So part of the energy provided goes as the work function energy to release the electron from the metal lattice. The remaining part of the energy becomes the kinetic energy of the electron. This is called maximum kinetic energy because we are assuming that electrons are not losing any energy due to the collisions with the atoms of the metal lattice, which is going to happen only in situations where electrons are being emitted from the surface. So if the electron is emitted from deeper inside, then it will lose energy and hence it will carry kinetic energy less than the maximum kinetic energy. Hence, the amount of energy provided by photon is equal to the sum of work function energy and the maximum kinetic energy assuming electron is emitted from the surface only. If electron is emitted from deeper inside, then it will carry kinetic energy 
which should be less than the maximum kinetic energy. After identifying these two possibilities, we also need to identify an experimental arrangement to determine the threshold frequency of the metal. To do that, we provide electromagnetic radiation whose frequency is higher than the threshold frequency so that the electrons would be ejected out with the kinetic energy. You provide a voltage that stops the electrons from reaching towards it. As you would gradually increase the voltage, the milliammeter would record a zero current. That is going to happen when the most energetic electron would be just stopped by this particular voltage and be repelled back. Hence, this particular voltage, which is able to just stop the most energetic electron, is called the stopping potential. And if you can find out the stopping potential, you can use the formula voltage into charge to get the maximum kinetic energy of the electron. For a particular metal, the experiment is repeated with different frequencies. As experiment is repeated with different frequencies, with different frequencies, we can get the different value of maximum kinetic energy. Once maximum kinetic energies are being determined, corresponding to those frequencies, and we plot a graph looking at the equation, HF equals HF naught plus EK max, which we discussed earlier on. From rearranging it, we get EK max equals HF minus HF naught. So if I plot a graph of EK max against frequency, then the x-intercept of that graph would get me the threshold frequency. And hence, by plotting various points and extended the, extending the graph, I would be able to determine the threshold frequency for a specific metal. If the same experiment is repeated for another metal, then I will get a similar graph, a graph that would have an equal gradient. Since Planck's constant doesn't change, so if I plot a graph for different metals, all of them should give me parallel straight lines cutting the x-axis at their own corresponding threshold frequency. They are parallel because they should have equal gradients. They should have equal gradients because the gradient of the graph is equal to the Planck's constant. If you found this video informative, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.